Hello all. Today, in this video, we are going to discuss about a topic called as Climate Change Performance Index or otherwise CCPI. Let me give you a brief introduction about the importance of this topic. So basically, in UGC NET paper number one, two units, that is your people and environment and higher education, these two units, they are a combination of static and dynamic portion. That is things that are never going to change come under your static portion, like your theories, your names of your commissions, your earlier education policies. These kind of things, they come under your static portion. That is, you have to study them. Even if you study them after 30, 40 years also, they are not going to change. Whereas there is another concept, another type of portion, which is called as dynamic portion. That is, it keeps on changing. Like year after year or session after session, the values, they keep on changing. These two portions, they form a combination. Like in paper uh, 1, unit number 9 and 10, these two are combined and they have developed the syllabus. And in exam also, we expect five questions from people and environment and five questions from higher education. In these five questions also, a few of them are going to be from static, a few of them are going to be from dynamic. And the topic that is CCPI that we are going to cover today, it comes under your dynamic portion. That is the rankings, indices, these things, they keep on changing year after year. Annually, they change, right, depending upon the performance. So the topic that we are going to discuss comes under your dynamic portion of which unit it comes under your environment, people and environment unit. So first, first of all, what is this CCPI? That is this Climate Change Performance Index. This Climate Change Performance Index is like a guideline, you can say, or kind of a framework which evaluates different countries' progress. Progress towards what? Progress of their policies towards achieving Paris Agreement goals. As you know, Paris Agreement is one of the uh, climate change related agreements which was agreed upon by many United Nations countries in the year 2015. Points related to this, I'll be discussing at the end of this video. Let's focus on CCPI first. So this CCPI evaluates how every country is progressing, how the policy of every country is helping to achieve the targets that we have fixed for your Paris disagreement okay and now we are just saying country 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 we should know how many countries right so including india around 63 countries are included the policies of 63 countries are included along with your eu what is this eu is nothing but european union uh, recently the countries which are there in europe they have combined together and they have formed this union right so this european union countries like germany spain like that so those countries along with another 63 countries, in these 63 countries, India is also one of the member countries. All right. Now, why choose only these 63 countries? The world has uh, so many countries, right? More than 150, more than, sorry, 190 countries are there. So why to choose this, these countries? There is a reason. These countries, the 63 countries plus European Union together, they are responsible for around 90 percentage of global greenhouse emissions. GHG we say, right? So out of these countries, they produce around 90 percentage. Remaining countries, they produce only 10 percentage of global greenhouse gases. So that is why evaluating these countries, monitoring these countries plays a very important role. Now coming to this CCPI recent, in, recent uh, index which were released. As you know, the COP conference of parties of UNFCCC has recently happened. It's actually just finished. Yesterday only it had finished. So it started on November 13th, sorry, 30th of November and it happened till 12th of December. Okay, in this year, just in this year, in 2023. And it happened where? It happened in Dubai. Now, this also can come as another question. They can ask you, COP28 COP of UNFCCC happened in which place? Like that, they can ask you. So be very, uh, you know, attentive for these kinds of questions also. Even though we are discussing about CCPI, I am giving you a few other details which can also come in your exam. Right. Now, another point related to CCPI. See, whenever we, spe we are speaking about any index, there should be some indicators, there should be some parameters which we are, you know, uh, calculating in order to assign some mark or some rank for the countries. So here in terms of CCPI, there are four different categories and inside these four different categories, 14 indicators are used for assigning mark or rank to different countries. Now from this also, you can get questions. They can ask you in CCPI, how many categories of parameters are used? Like that, they can ask you. So what are the different categories? They give 40 percentage weightage for greenhouse gas emissions. Total when you combine, it should be 100 percentage. So out of that 40 percentage, greenhouse gas emissions point is given then another 20 20 20 is given for renewable energy 
energy use and also for climate policy. Okay, now this is another point which is important when it comes to the basics of CCPI. Now, this is what the crux of this video is about. India is has been placed in rank number seven. Okay, uh, compared to last year, we have moved one spot. Last year, we were in eighth place. Now, we have moved to which place? We have moved to uh, seventh place, rank number seven. And the score, what is the score of India in the CCPI? It is 70.25. Another very interesting and notable thing is that in this particular index, whenever we see an index, I always tell you, right, you have to study the top five, you have to study the top 10 like that. But in this, it's actually very go easy for you to study because there is no country which is placed in the first three ranks. Why? What is the justification they provide for this? They are saying none of the countries have performed so well that they could be placed in the first three places. So fourth rank is kind of considered to be the first rank for this index. So Denmark is uh, Denmark has scored around 75.59, which has placed them in the top of the list. Okay. And India, we are in rank seven. This could be asked to you as a question. What is the rank of India in the recent CCPI uh, like report? Like that, they can ask you. All right. Now. I told you, right, uh, this uh, CCPI is actually about assessing the country's uh, progress towards achieving Paris Agreement goals. Now, let's see a few points related to Paris Agreement. Paris Agreement, it was agreed upon in the conference. COP is nothing but conference of parties, okay? Conference of parties in two, uh, 21st conference of parties, which happened in the year 2015. Actually, it happened in Paris. That is why it is named as Paris Agreement, okay? Before Paris Agreement came into effect, there was another protocol called as Kyoto Protocol. I think all of you might have at least heard this point once before. Kyoto Protocol is also very important from exam point of view. So this, I, we will be releasing another video related to Kyoto Protocol also. But as of now, just remember that Paris Agreement came as a replacement for your Kyoto Protocol. Okay, this Kyoto Protocol is also actually dealing with climate change only. After the uh, commitment period of Kyoto Protocol ended, this Paris Agreement was started. Now, what is the main goal of Paris Agreement? Of course, it is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And the most important point which happen, which keeps on, uh, they ask a year after year, is the main aim of Paris Agreement. What is the goal of Paris Agreement? According to Paris Agreement, United Nations countries have agreed that we will limit the global warming, the increase in global temperature, less than 2 degrees Celsius, Less than 2 degrees, we have to have some comparison when we are saying I reduce, they are not saying that I will reduce 2 degrees Celsius, but they are saying compared to the pre-industrial era, that is before industrialization process began, it started in England, right? So before the industrialization process happened, the global climate, how much it would have present, it would have been there that time. Compared to that time, the climate now, of course, the temperature will be high, but what they are saying we will try to maintain that increase in temperature below 2 degrees Celsius. That is just as an example, I'm saying, if before industrialization, the you say, let the, let the average temperature, if it was uh, 16, 15 degrees Celsius, now we will try to maintain it maybe 16 or 17 degrees Celsius. So compared to that, increase should be less than 2 degrees Celsius. To, because it is not possible to reduce it below the pre-industrial phase, okay? Because that time there were almost... Uh, not, I can't say nil, but the amount of greenhouse gas emissions were quite low that time. After the industrialization process came only, we have started emitting all these things na, by burning fossil fuels, by transportation, other modes of transportation, etc., etc. So, the, to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial era and preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius. Actually, initially they said 2 degree and then and 1.5 degrees Celsius is what now we are preferring for. Right. Another few points related to your Paris Agreement. In this, two important words you have to remember. One is nationally determined contributions or in other words, NDC. What is this NDC? Basically, each country will have its own plan. Okay. Every country should has, should must have actually its own plan for mitigating the climate, climate change, the climate action, basically. So that is what is called nationally determined contributions. Each and every country will have its own NDC. India also has its own NDC. This we will discuss in another video because it's very important. This NDC is very important and they can ask direct questions from that. Another word that you have to know is LTLEDs. What is this LTLEDs? Long-term low greenhouse gas emission 
development strategy so basically it's it's quite simple even though the name is big it's actually a simple idea in order to reach your ndc I mean, many countries have agreed, right, that uh, I'll reduce this much emissions, I will increase the renewable energy like that. So in order to do that, what are the strategies that you have to follow year after year to reach those NDCs? That is what is called as LTNITs. That is the plan that you have in hand in order to reach the NDC. Simple as that. And one more word, this, this may be new for you because it's going to get implemented in 2024 only which is Enhanced Transparency Framework, ETF. So basically, using this ETF framework, countries should report what actions they have taken and how much progress they have done towards climate change. Okay, so in case of an exam, they ask you, what is the name of the uh, framework which has been designed by, uh, say, uh, which is designed under Paris Agreement so that the countries can uh, report about their actions about climate change. So the answer for that will be ETF. Enhanced Transparency Framework. So as a consolidated word, if I have to say, CCPI, Climate Change Performance Index, India has placed in, India is in rank number seven. This report was released in COP28, which happened in Dubai. There are four categories of, indi uh, four indi sorry, four categories and 14 indicators. Out of them, high weightage is given to greenhouse gas emissions, 40 percentage. India is placed in seventh, as you know, and score of 70.25. The highest ranking country is Denmark, but first three places are kept empty. It, this Paris Agreement came in 2015, and then it came it is a replacement for Kyoto Protocol. It is related to limiting greenhouse gas emissions, and then reducing this 2 degrees Celsius point and 1.5 degrees Celsius point. These two you have to remember re regarding Paris Agreement, NDC, LTLX, ETF. That's it. Nothing else you have to remember related to this topic. And you can you can expect questions related to dynamic portion of uh, environment, people and environment in this. And another important point, as you all know, the UGC NET exam, is the syllabus is going to change for June 2024 session. But one thing, please keep it in mind that EVS is the part of EVS is not going to get removed under any circumstance because internationally and nationally every country is urging towards sustainability towards environmental protection uh, slowing down environmental exploitation degradation etc so it is inevitable that students who are going to become assistant professors are going, going to pursue research know about environment so there is no possibility that this particular topic is going to get removed from people and environment from your UGC net syllabus. Okay. So if you are already started preparing for June 2024 session, you don't have to worry about the new syllabus because most of the things, they are just going to get upgraded. They are not going to get removed. So don't stop your preparation, those who are preparing for June 2024 and people who are going to write June 2000, uh, June, sorry, 2023 December session all the very best and those who have already written, you have done your best and we will wait for the results which can be expected in another 15 to 20 days. All the very best and we will see wait for another video wherein we will be discussing other environment related uh, dynamic and also static portion. Stay tuned.